So let's get into worship. Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you for who you are, God. Thank you for being in this in this building with us, Lord. Thank you. Your word says you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that is moving in this in this place right now. He's moving in this place. I thank you, Lord. There's people here that is leaning to you this morning. There's people here that is leaning on the Holy Spirit, and they got some things, some very specific things in their life that needs to be worked out. And we're looking to you, Lord. We're looking to you, the, the author and finisher of our faith. You're the only one. You are the only God. Hallelujah. The one and, and true God that can make a change. Father, we're looking to you today. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do in this service as we are obedient to your to you today. We will move and we will speak and we will sing and we will worship according to the word, Father. And great will be this service, Father. And I thank you for it. Thank you for it, Father. Glory to God. We let it come out of our mouth. We will receive today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's worship.
Christ shall come. Oh, yes. With a shout of acclamation. Gonna take.
shouldn't pursue the things Brother LJ was talking about. Yeah, Don't pursue right. the things. That's right. I read this uh, this morning. I felt impressed to bring it out. It says, Don't pursue the blessings. Pursue Jesus, the blesser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As you pursue Him, you don't have to be concerned about the blessings. Yeah. Because they will follow after you. Mm -hmm. It says, In fact, the Hebrew translations of Psalms 23, 6 is much stronger and more aggressive than sometimes what the King James did, uh, translated. It literally says, Good, surely goodness and mercy shall hunt me down all the days of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I just get myself excited thinking about the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Goodness and mercy will hunt me thank down. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That, well, you say, well, all this, y'all been talking a lot about speaking. What do I say? That right there. Goodness and mercy Thank is hunting me down. Yeah. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And I make myself known. Amen. Yes, Come amen. in. Come on. Praise Thank God. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise Lord. You know, healing is a blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm here to pray. Amen for anybody that needs prayer as far as Jesus, our request. Jesus. And I was thinking about that when I seen that. I said, healing is a blessing. Oh, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has made a way. Hallelujah. Amen. All we need to do, we have no problems. All we need is faith Thank in God. Jesus. Faith in God. Hallelujah. Just believe that He is who He says He is. And Jesus done what Jesus done. Amen. What He said He done. Amen. In the area of healing, and you can you can walk whole. Nothing broken and nothing missing. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to uh, just pray and then we're going to turn the service over to our pastor this morning. Um, we've got a, a few people. If you know of somebody that is not feeling well this morning or going through some hard times, just call their name out. Amen. During this prayer. Amen. Uh, we have Just let them come out your mouth. Amen. Pastor's brought out the last service or so, maybe Wednesday night about a silent prayer. Silent prayer ain't much good. You got to let it come out of your mouth. Yeah. Open up your mouth and declare some things. Amen. So if somebody, if, if the Lord lays somebody on your heart, call their name out loud. We'll agree with you. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I am a ask for a better result. Praise God. Come on. Perfectly healed and mm. healing Jesus. Awesome. And through this process, Thank you, Jesus. He, Hallelujah. He's learned some things about standing on the promises of God and yeah. standing on the word yeah. and the priest. Yeah. And, and the Lord saw a lot to tell him about the Christian's life. Praise God. Through this, I, I mm -hmm. think God wanted to tell him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Good deal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Come on. Right. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. It could have went. It could have went the other way. <laughs> Amen. But God. Hallelujah. Come on. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Lord. But God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, we need to remember to pray one for another. Man, that's powerful. Hallelujah. And, and let me say this in receiving healing. Get yourself out of the way. Thank that's you. something the Lord spoke to me, and he said, get all of your dues out of the way. Hallelujah. Because healing is established. Jesus took stripes for your healing, period. He said, because I, I, I was bad about, well, I, I ate this, or I didn't exercise, or I didn't this, or, or I did this to cause this problem. He said, get all of the eyes out of the way. Because, see, Christ came and died for those that was not deserving. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was not deserving of, to be saved or to be healed or delivered or any of that. Amen. But Jesus done it. Glory yes, to God. So I can receive it whether I'm deserving or not. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. But you know what, ha what happens when you receive Christ Absolutely. and you receive these mm -hmm. healings and miracles? It makes a change for the better. Like this. Amen. It brings you closer to God. When you say, man, even though I, I bombed out and done this, and caused all these problems, Jesus still, amen, I was still able to freely receive everything I need. It just makes you love him more and more. When you see what he truly done, amen, it takes yourself out of the way and look just at him, amen. That's that's a powerful, powerful testimony. I'm so grateful that he is doing better, amen, and uh, back on the job. That's powerful, amen. My wife's, uh, I guess that would be cousin, uh, was shot in the throat a while back. We had had some require. We want to just remember him, amen, and his recovery. I know they, uh, the doctors say there's it's a long road. There's a lot of things that's going to take place, uh, but I believe for speedy recovery, amen. Praise the Lord. You know, Jesus, people say, well, no, I, I think that healing is only for the Christian people, and I think it, no, no, no. You know, when Jesus came down here and prayed for the sick, wasn't none of them born again. When he laid hands on the sick and they recovered, when he raised Lazarus out of the dead, they wouldn't know he hadn't died. He hadn't went to the cross in the grave. There was no salvation as far as like we experience today. So, amen. What better testimony for a non, uh, somebody that's living out in the world that God raises them up? Praise the Lord. We don't need to back off. We need to pray. Lay hands. You know, Sister Janice brought out the scripture this morning and said, stir yourself up. It says, by the laying on of hands. And the Lord just started speaking to me a couple days ago. He said, son, you need to start putting your hands on people a little bit more. And he said, be sensitive to my spirit when I say, just put your hands on somebody. Put your hands on them. I don't need to know why. I just need to be obedient. Amen. I said, yes, Lord, I'm going to do that. Amen. Maybe it's just a hug. Maybe I just need to wrap my hands around them, put my hand on them, say I love you. He said, but be sensitive. You need to touch people. You need to lay your hands on them. You need to set your hand on people. When just be sensitive, amen, to the spirit of the leading, amen, of the Holy Spirit. So um, if you have something, like I said, we're going to move right along. We want to give our pastor plenty of time to, to deliver the word of God today. So if you would and you can, stand. We're going to pray and transition to this service, but just praying for... Uh, this young man and uh, I'm telling you Tyler needs some prayer today amen he needs prayer amen but you know in this first we're going to thank the Lord for Steve coming up coming out amen I'm, I'm grateful for that amen so I, I believe our pastor preached a message about prayer it needs to be sandwiched you need to start with praise make your request and then end with praise sandwich that prayer in there <laughs> hallelujah Amen. So come on. Like I said, if somebody comes upon your heart, call them out. Lord, we just thank you right now, God, for this healing that, that manifested in Steve's life. God, thank you. Hallelujah for moving in a mighty way and causing the things that the doctor said could go really bad. You turn those things around for his good. Father, thank you that he's standing healed today. That foot is, is doing well, and I thank you for that. We give you the praise for that, Father. And right now we come before you um, and pray for Tyler, God. Use the doctors and the nurses and the family and the different ones to impart a word to him, God. That you are a God of, heal of healing and wholeness. And you can take the things that the doctors are saying that you'll never do this again or you'll never do that again or this is going to be hard. This is going to take place. He can He can say, I appreciate what you're saying, but I believe God can bring me up and bring me out. Father, thank you for touching his body right where he lays in Jesus' name.
Jesus' name, God, thank you for making a change, God. Let him know that it is something supernatural. It's not just a normal uh, healing, but it's a supernatural healing that takes place in his body. And we're going to be quick to give you praise for that, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it, God. God, I thank you for our pastor this morning. We thank you for his uh, boldness in the Holy Ghost this morning as he delivers the word of God. Let every one of us right now just prepare our heart to receive what the, what you are wanting to speak through the man of God at this hour. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand and our pastor. Thank you, Lord. Let's just do this little course before we come. He inhabits the praises of his people. his name. We should spend a lot of time, especially when we're gathered together, in praise and worship to God. Amen. Would you agree to that? We should spend a lot more time about Him. Amen. And I tell you, I love that scripture where it says He inhabits the praises of His people. Oh, I know He's with me. He's with me always. But there is an outward expression of the Holy Spirit of God when we worship Him. It comes down. It comes down on us. Praise God. said that they were filled with the Holy Ghost and when He came upon them, they had Him inside of them because they was born again when Jesus breathed on them, remember? But then He said, go and tarry in the upper room till you be endued with power from on high and he, the Holy Spirit will come on us. Well, how many know that we need Him on us just as well as we do in us? Praise God. How many know that we need an outward expression of an inward infilling. Yes, Amen. It needs to come on the outside of us too. And, and it has today. Praise God. I've, I've felt His presence today. Amen. Sister Janice did done a powerful job this morning in teaching the Word of God. Uh, I didn't know. She never tells me what she's going to teach on. So I'm, I'm right with you. I get it when you get it. Praise the Lord. Uh, and I tell you, 
I appreciate what I heard today. Did you? Did you hear some good stuff that's going to help you? Amen. I sure did too. And praise God that her strength is just coming back in, in droves. Praise God. Aren't you glad for that? I appreciate the Lord uh, for Sister Janice and what she's brought today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Jason, would you pray for this change of the service and pray over this service today? Dear Heavenly Father, we just praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. For this time of worship through your word. Yes, God. Yes, God. Allow us to this level and just hear what you have to say to the heart. Father. Yes, God. We praise you and thank you for being in this place. Yes, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Jason, for praying this morning. Hallelujah. I have a message that uh, I want to get over to you today that I think is going to be very vitally important, especially in the days near to come. Uh, we're going to begin. Let's see. Janice talked about David this morning, and, and, uh, and I'm going to talk about David, uh, too. I want us to turn open, if we would, to Psalms chapter 46. We'll start at verse 1, Psalms 46 and verse 1. And there's a scripture in here that I want us to focus on as we get to it. And we'll get to it, we'll read through 11. But I want us to focus on verse 10. And uh, so let's read that very first thing. Can we do that? Let's read that and then I'll let you, this will be our text scripture. Then we'll let you be seated after this. But then I'll read some more on, in Psalms. Verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Let's read that together, would you? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted among the earth. Glory be to God. Lord, we thank you right now as we're standing for this word. We give you praise. Just take a minute, lift your hands up and give him praise for the word. Hallelujah. God, we thank you right now for this word, God, that you're giving us. Be still and know your word says, God, and we thank you for it right now. We give you honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name mighty name. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. You can be seated. And let me read you the before and after. Is that all right? I want to read you the before and after of this powerful scripture where the Lord is telling us this morning, be still and know that I'm God. Verse uh, 46 and 1. This is powerful. Now get a hold of some of these things here. You won't remember everything that I read. Brother Keith done a powerful job last Sunday. And I said we won't remember everything that was read, but we'll remember something. You came here today needing to hear something. Am I right about it? Amen. So let's get a hold of whatever it is. The Holy Spirit knows where you're at. Verse 1 says, God is our refuge. Janice talked about this. And strength. A very present help in trouble. Amen. Anybody need that one? Yeah. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling thereof? Selah. Yeah. You know what that means? Pause for just a minute and think about what he just said. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 4, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. I like his timing. Early. 
the heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Pause and think about that. Because, see, we tend to forget who's in charge. God's in charge. Amen. Verse 8, Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolation He has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bows and cutteth the spears in sunder. He burneth the chariots of fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Pause and think about that. Whoo! We need to imagine some things of who God is. I have spent a very unusual week this week from the time I think I taught on last Sunday morning. From that point on, I did not hear from God in any capacity. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I did not hear from God. Now, I got concerned about Tuesday or Wednesday because I didn't hear nothing from God. I want to ask a question in this message. What do you do when for a time you don't hear from God? Now, let me ask you, or, or, or was it just me? I even checked myself. I said, Lord, now I know I'm saved. <laughs> And I'm a preacher. I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, 69 years old. I've been preaching since I was 30. And God is almost, uh, uh, Brother Donald, speaking to me on a continual basis. Because he'll give me messages to preach days and weeks before. And then I'll study on them and I'll seek them out and things like that. But I got to, I got to being concerned about Tuesday or so. And Wednesday come along, I, ain't, I didn't hear from God. I'm talking about in my spirit. You know what I'm saying. Is anybody in the house? You, you 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 went through a time that you just you just can I just talk plain you just flat did not hear a word from the Lord. Come on. And about and, and, and it got toward Thursday and it got toward Friday and then Saturday came and I told my wife as I was going to bed on Saturday night I said Janice God ain't spoke to me nothing what am I gonna do in the morning. And you know what she told me? I got, a, I got a wise wife. And she knows more about the Bible than anything than I ever could ever thought about. She knows more about the Bible. Brother Don said this past week, said that woman knows more about the Bible than any person I've ever known. That's right. And that's saying a lot. I, I feel the same way. Before I went to bed, she says, don't worry about it. God will tell you what to preach on. Right. But I ain't heard nothing. And I'm thinking, what am I going to say this morning? Nothing, I guess. <laughs> but at 4 o'clock this morning, God spoke to my heart. She said, God will tell you what to say. And 4 o'clock this morning, God began to speak to my heart. And He said, what do you do when you go for a time when you don't hear from God? Now, I, I want to look, and I, and I looked up, and I've done all this this morning when I got to church. So I, the Lord began to direct me, and He said, Be still and know that I'm God. 
Sometimes we'll go through certain times and seasons when we're not seeing nothing happen or we're not feeling nothing. Now, Pentecostal people, and you look at me for just a minute, we, we go a lot by our feelings and our emotions, and boy, when we're not jerking and jumping and shouting, we say, uh-uh, what's up? But what do we do? The question is, and he spoke to me, so what do you do when there is a time there that you're not hearing anything from me? See, God's time and our time is not the same. That's right. <laughs> He said that, that, that a thousand years to him is as one day. So he, for the whole week he didn't speak to me. That could have been five minutes for him. Three seconds for him. But he began to deal with me on something. What do you do, son, when you don't hear from me? I said, well, Lord, all I know is trust you. Yeah. Come on. Just trust you. So I begin to look and I begin to study and, I, and I'm going to get to some things, but I want to lay some groundwork. I looked up the word be still in the Hebrew. Now, when you're studying the word of God, you need to get a word from the Lord. You need to find it where it's written at. If it's either Hebrew or Greek and you find the definition because it can mean one thing in Hebrew and it could mean something more in Greek. So I'm, we just read that be still and know that I'm God. So we, we need to go there there in Hebrew and find it. So I want to read you the definition. The, and, 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 and just listen to me. Let me lay the groundwork and then we're going somewhere. The word be still in the Hebrew is rapa. R-A-P-A. It means this. To slacken. Or slack off. Somebody <laughs> turn to your neighbor and say slack off. Slack off. Slack off. Slack off. Or let down or cease. Now, let me read you something that went with it. It connotes, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that, it connotes two people fighting until someone separates them and makes them drop their weapons. It is only after the fighting has stopped that the warriors can acknowledge their trust in God. Be still. Stop fighting. Stop struggling. I'm telling you, I was, I was getting nervous and embarrassed after a few days of struggling. Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? What? Just, and he said, just be still. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, just be still. And trust God. It said, stop frantic activity. Can I say it again? Be still. Stop frantic activity. Anybody ever been in frantic mode? God's saying something to us now this morning if we get a hold of it. Stop frantic activity. Let down. Be still. And trust God. Or lift your hands and surrender. Take your hands off of it, is what God is saying. He's saying, I'm your refuge, I'm your strength, I'm your help, I'm your deliverance, I'm your Lord, I'm your Savior. Be still. And am I talking to anybody other than myself? Have you ever struggled with your, with your finances? Have you ever struggled with your jobs? Have you ever struggled with these things? And all the time God is saying, turn it loose and let me do this. Amen. Come on, God is saying something powerful to us if we'll listen to it this morning because we'll get stuff done. If we'll do it, let God do it. Did we just read the, the before and after of how mighty he is, how this earth crumbles under his word and just falls under his power. So I don't have any trouble. All I need is faith in God. Glory to God. Stop frantic activity. Here's my thing. Oh my God. What are we going to do? 
And God is saying, be still. And no, now, we have to understand the be still part first that he's saying. Stop frantic activity. Are you willing to do that? Now, we need to know what he meant when he said, and know that I am God. It said in the Hebrew, acknowledge who God is. He is number one, yeah. omniscient, what does that mean? All-knowing. Omniscient, all-knowing. Number two, He's omnipresent. He's present everywhere. Know who God is. Number three, He's omnipotent. All-powerful. Know who God is. He's holy. He's faithful. Amen. He's infinite. Amen. And He's good. That's what the Hebrews say. And He was saying this, Brother Donald, don't worry, know God. Be still and get to know God. Has God ever let us down? Has God ever dropped us in the middle of trouble and problems? I don't know what you're going to do now. It said, know that God is, is omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, present everywhere, omnipotent, all-powerful. He is holy. He is faithful. He is infinite. And He is good. I know God is good. So the scripture that says, be still and know that I am God has a powerful meaning to us. And He wants us to turn it loose. I want to read over in... Uh, Psalms again because we're talking about David in just a few minutes. Psalms 118 and 1. Psalms 118 and 1. Oh give thanks unto the Lord for He is good because His mercy endureth every now and then. Brother Tommy, I get in my old painting van in the morning and I say, Lord, I thank You for Your mercy. Because you know what mercy is? is God being good to us when we don't deserve a thing in the world. He's good to us. Let Israel now say that His mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that His mercy endureth forever. Let them that now fear the Lord say that His mercy endureth forever. In our day, that's the whole church. The church should be declaring and the born again people should be declaring that God is a merciful God. He'll have mercy on us. I remember when the hurricane hit, you know, I was all brave and all that stuff. Me and my wife sitting in the living room and all of a sudden trees started dropping like flowers in front of the house. I begin to say, Lord, have mercy. Oh, God, have mercy. <laughs> I was okay for a while, but boy, when them trees started, I was needing the mercy of God. God is merciful. The Lord is on my side. He's on your side. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me at a large place. Now, when we're preaching and reading this Bible, we need to be saying, yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. I receive it. I receive that. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord taketh my part with them, and he helped me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. You got some folk that hate you. But we got a God, Brother Tommy, that loves us. And you know what? That's all that matters. Amen. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Amen. Mm, ain't that powerful? Amen. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes Amen. or governors or senators or presidents. All nations can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They can pass me about, yea, they can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They can pass me about like bees, they are quenched like the fire of thorns, for in the name of the Lord... 
I will destroy them. Amen. Thou hast trust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song and is come become my salvation. Amen. Is that right? That's right? Is that talking to me and you? Yes. Amen. Do you receive it today? Is that you? <laughs> Janice, I thought was going to get on my scriptures in 1 Samuel chapter 17. But it wouldn't matter because we, we both preach. And so we're just going to get to chapter 17 in verse 45. Just a different portion of that chapter 17. How many born again people do I have? You born again. You have a covenant with God. That's right. Yes. And do you know what it is all about? I don't care what you're going through. It's about your covenant with God. See, the world can't do things against you like they do against the world's people or the devil's people because we have a covenant with God. Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear. And with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord. Now we need to get used to using that phrase right there. Because that phrase is actually saying to me and you, I'm a covenant Christian. I'm a covenant person. And devil, Goliath, you can't do certain things to me because I'm a child of God. Are you hearing me today? That's right. Amen. In the name of the Lord, David said, of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, somebody say this day, will the Lord deliver thee into mine hands, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowl of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. David's calling things that be not as though they were. Are you listening to me? There's no way a 17 year old boy is going to go out there and defy the armies of the devil and, and no, in his size he had no, no weapons that we knew of but he had spiritual weapons in the carnal sense it looked like as a matter of fact Goliath even said this Sister Janice Goliath said you're just a joke is all you are. You're going to go under. You have nothing but what Goliath didn't know was is the psalmist David had a covenant with the king of kings and the lord of lords and those that were he knew his that was David writing about God is my refuge and God is my strength and God's going to bring me through this God's going to deliver me that was David that wrote that in the book of Psalms and he knew and he knew though that there was stuff he couldn't do in the natural I want us to look at our covenant that we have and move from the natural sense. Folks, I'm here to tell you if we'll move, we're not just carnal. We're not just in this battle by ourselves. We are spiritual. Yes, and then watch in verse 47. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and He will give it into our hands. If you'll take your hands off of it. Come on, somebody. Be still and know... Quit struggling and quit fighting to win battles. <laughs> the battle's not mine, said little David. Remember the song that we sang. But the devil wants us to think that this battle and this fight that we're battling with is between us and the devil. 
And David had one thing that he had going for him. He didn't have the size. He didn't have the finances. He didn't have none of the natural things that he had, but he had something going for him. He had a covenant with God. And he told Goliath in Essex, I have a covenant with God. What I'm doing is in the name of Jesus. There's enemies that is coming against us and we, we struggle. I, I struggle with them sometimes and I struggle and I fight and, and the Lord is saying in these scriptures, be still and know, stop struggling. Stop struggling. See love. Do you know when a person drowns is when they're struggling. If you fall off in the deep and you can't swim, if you start struggling, you go under. And when a person is struggling while they're in the water, you can't go out there and save them. Do you know why? Because of their struggling, they will pull you under as well. Are you listening to me? God is wanting us to know, I got this. The battle's not yours. I got I, I would I would love to tell y'all I got this message. I got a hold of this. I, I got revelation of this. I can I can do this, but I don't because I was even struggling this week to know what to preach on. Sometimes what God is wanting us to do is He just wants us to trust Him. When we don't know what to do, when there, there comes, there will be times in our lives, and anybody can you witness that you've been through a day or two or whatever the case may be that you didn't hear from God. Yeah. And you're asking God to, Lord, are you, I'm going through some stuff here. I don't know what to do. And the more the days would go by, the more frantic. Yeah. Anybody will testify. Yeah. The more frantic you become because we feel like, John, that time is running out. Right. Oh. Lord, you, you need to do something. I, I only got another day here and something's got to be done. Well, God said, don't worry about it. I speak to you at 4 o'clock in the morning before you have to show up in two hours. See, we trust in ourselves too much instead of trusting in God. And there's nothing wrong with notes. Listen to me. I like notes. I study them. But there are times that we need to put our hands in the hand of the man that still the waters. Come on, somebody. If y'all can't shout about this, I know why I'm preaching this message. is because we are worn out trying to fix it ourselves. Amen. That's right. Come on. We're worried. We're frustrated. God never intended for us to worry. Do you know what worry is? Worry is a form of fear. And he said, you don't have to fear. You know why? Because I got a covenant with God. And what the Lord told me and spoke to me, he says, I can give you a message just like that. And it could be the greatest message you ever preached in your life. And you ain't even got a thought. I mean, I was like a deadhead for a week. Come on. I didn't understand what was going on because I, I hadn't, hadn't been that way. I literally, I literally tried to put words together. I went back to over some of my old sermons, Brother Tommy, and I tried to put some of them together and it just would not work. God said, let me do this. Let, let me, if, if I do this, somebody's life will be changed. If you do this, it might be just the same old, same old. Yes. I need to get a revelation this morning that the battle's not mine. The battle is the Lord's and turn it over to Him and then look at the scripture that I love so much that it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength strength. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. Those that will wait upon the Lord. I mean at the ninth hour, at the twelfth hour, God can come through. At the twelfth hour, God is going to come through if we trust Him. If we're struggling with it, we'll drown. Yes. 
Come on. I don't want to drown. I don't either. And I, I, would, he, I want to learn to wait on the Lord. Yeah. I want to learn to turn things over to Him. I want to grow in the Lord. And I realize this growing, it, it takes growing to trust the Lord. It takes learning. It takes hearing the teaching. It takes hearing the preaching. But there are times in our lives that it's not instant. Yeah. Come on now. That's true. There's times in our lives that it just don't happen immediately. And there are times that it does. I'm not discounting that. But there are times, child of God, that, that Christians have given up and quit because they didn't like the time frame. Jesus, we preached a few weeks ago that Jesus delayed His coming for four days. And He showed up four days late according to the people. But He was not late. He was right on time. Do you know that the Bible says this? Brother Tommy, it says that Jesus, when He walked this earth, He didn't do anything that the Father didn't tell Him what to do first. You ever read that? Now, I'm not saying here that we don't do stuff. We do whatever our hands find to do with all our might. But I'm saying this. Jesus asked the Father, Sister Linda, before He done anything. He went by. He went the long way around because, see, Jesus knew that it wasn't Him doing the work. He said, I just do whatever my Father tells me to do, and my Father does the work. Right. So why am I trying to struggle and do the work? My Father does the work, Jesus said. And so Jesus delayed His coming for Lazarus for four days. Why? Because God said, be still. Yes. And know that I'm God. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord, to just... Sit down and rest in the Lord. We struggle with each other. We struggle with ourselves. We struggle with the church because things just ain't working in the time frame that we feel like they should. But Jesus said, I ain't moving. His friends, he had close friends on this earth. There was Mary and Martha and Lazarus. It was, it was three of them. They were close. They loved each other. They were close, right? And Jesus, I better sit down for a little while. Jesus said, they were sent word. Your friend Lazarus is dying. Come and heal him. Could it be that God didn't speak a time to Jesus or could it be a slight delay there or could the father said just be still and know that I'm God now Jesus came in the form of 100% God but he also came in the form of 100% man he knew exactly what we struggle with he knew exactly what we're dealing with he was awesome and could it have been that he had to just sit still for a while yeah Y'all don't shout me down because I'm preaching good now. There ain't nobody shouting too much when you say just, just, just wait upon the Lord. They that, they that wait upon the Lord and get a word from God because, see, we're covenant people. Amen. And our most powerful strength, John mentioned it this morning, is the name of Jesus. We come against things how? In Jesus' name. But do we give up and quit? And we just say, well, it's over because we don't hear the answer today or the next day or the next day. Do we give up? God said, what, what do you do when you don't hear from me exactly when you want to? Let's be still and know Him. Now, 
here's how we can trust Him. Because He's good. I know He's good. I know He ain't letting me go under. Come on, somebody. Brother Tommy, we have to know these things. There are some people that are Christians, I'm sure, that are not really positive about what God will do, mainly because they don't know Him. And so we wonder and we question. How many know this morning? Let's think about it just a minute. How many know what God will do in your situation? Come on, it's all right to lift your hand. You know some that I know, I know this, I know this, and I know this in my mind. I know. So I heard them teach it, I heard them preach it, I know this in my mind. All right, sit down and hush. <laughs> I'm preaching for him now. <laughs> I didn't say that. Yeah. Sit down and be quiet. Come on. Sit down and just... I don't know this week. Uh, you know, I get nervous when I had to preach. I, I've been preaching since I was 30 years old and I'm 60. And I get nervous. And I said, Lord, I'm getting nervous here. <laughs> you ain't saying nothing and it's my job, it's my anointing, it's my calling to share the word. He said, I got this. The battle's not thine, but it's mine. Knucklehead. <laughs> Now, he, now, the Lord may not call you knucklehead, but He calls me knucklehead quite regularly. Because you know why? Because I'm a knucklehead. I'm a knucklehead. Sometimes. Yes. You'd think after so many years I'd begin to trust the Lord. And, okay, all right, I, I'm just going to rest. Uh, shoot, I ain't even got to study. Because the battle's not mine. I should be resting. I, said, I think I'll. I think I'll go to the beach. I don't even have to take time to read. I don't have to take time. To, I think I'm just. But you know what? We we won't enjoy God. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, but hush, hush. John preached on Wednesday night a powerful message. You have to watch what, this, what comes out of your mouth. You've got to watch what you say. And especially, he and I were talking, especially when you're first dealing with an issue that could cause struggle or trouble or problem. That right there, that first word that you say in your situation will give the devil an exit or give him an entrance. Right. Are you listening to me? And we have to watch what we say. And I have to watch my mouth and I need to... You know, there was a time that Jesus said this. He was fixing to be crucified and He told the disciples. You remember this? He told the disciples, He says, I'm not going to say very much at all after this. He said what needed to be said. And He said, I'm not going to say any more after this. Do you know why? Because the devil can't read your heart. And did you know that the devil can't read your mind? Only God can read your mind. The devil, devil ain't got no clue about anything until it comes out of our mouth. <laughs> Brother Donald, we have given him enough ammunition to beat our brains in. <laughs> Come on, somebody, because the first thing that happens is, is if there's a problem or if there's an issue, blah, 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 blah. right? So, 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 I, do you know that people will get, people will really get upset with you, especially in pastoring, and I know this, if they bring something to my attention and I don't say nothing. And you know what they're pushing for? They're pushing for me to say something. I need to learn not to say anything until I talk to the Father first. Now, <clears throat> we've got some precious people in here. Some of you hardly say a word. <laughs> and some of you can hardly not say a word. <laughs> Why 
whether you're one or the other, you've got to be concerned about what comes out of your mouth. Because, see, the enemy is looking for an open door. He can't read your mind. But he just reads our mouth. And we give him ways to, to jump in there and cause issues. Grow in the Lord this morning and watch what's coming out of here. If you're facing issues and you're facing problems, be still and know. Be still and get to know God. Jesus knew the Father, so He would not go anywhere or do anything until His Father, by the Holy Spirit, told Him what to do. He had an unction on the inside as to what to do. And then He wouldn't do anything. He'd even go out of the way of some of His trips and meet a woman by the well that had a problem and she had uh, numerous marriages and she had issues and she had all kind of things. He went out of his way. Why did he go out of his way? He didn't come up with that. Well, I think I'm going to go to Samaria today. No. He lifted his hands and he took his hands off of it and he turned it over to the Lord and said, Lord, this is your battle. Now, y'all know good and well that there ain't no way an 18-year-old boy, 17-year-old boy is going to kill a giant with all of the experience that he had. No way. But he had something different than Goliath had. He had a relationship with the Lord. And then, here, here's a good word to do in any situation. In Jesus' name. The devil says, what you going to do? In Jesus' name, you'll be defeated. Yeah, but you, you, you know you got to do some times running out. No, in Jesus' name. I have a covenant. That's it. A child of God needs to learn to use the covenant. That's right. Because, see, there's no way you're going to beat this thing. In yourself. Right. Are you listening to me? You're not going to get through this. We're not going to get through this life without realizing who He is and that I have a covenant with Him. And I'm operating in Jesus' name, not in Jerry's name. Come on, somebody. Take my hands off of it. Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. I'm not going to do a thing in the world till you tell me. Now, a lot of people take that wrong and you can't get them to work. You couldn't get them to work if you just went out there and laid it in their lap. But if we take our hands off of it, God will open up doors and then He'll speak to us and then He'll say this, all right, now, do this. Turn right. Go down three blocks. Make a left. Do you know where this world has got us? And I'm trying to close, but do you know where this world has got us? There's no more absolutes anymore. That's what the world says. There's no absolutes. Here's what they say. Uh, Brother John, they say this world operates in gray areas. Everything is a gray area. No. They are still absolutes. God is absolute. There is still black. There is still white. It's not everything is in gray areas. They are absolutes. God is absolute. Go down. Take five steps. Take right. Go down. Do it this way. Do it that way. And do the other way. God will speak to us if we'll listen to Him. We can't listen to Him. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody and you're trying to share something with them and they talk so much till you couldn't get help into them because it's... it's, 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 it's. You, you ever met anybody like that? We need to be still and be quiet and listen and hear 
and know. What did he say? All this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, but the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. That's your scripture. That's, that's our scripture. The, 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 we're the assembly. That's our scripture right there. Then when the Lord gives us an open door, go through that door. But be still and be quiet and trust the Lord. We're going to have to well, we don't have to. I don't mean to put it that way. But if we're going to see things happen in our lives, we're going to need to learn that we got to trust the Lord with some things. Anybody willing to do that? Amen. Are you willing to turn things over to the Lord this morning? I want to ask you to stand to your feet, if you will. Are you willing? Everybody in here is facing and dealing with something. It, it, I don't, it's, it's between you and God. But what the Lord is telling us, just take your hands off of it. I'm going to give you direction if you'll let me, let me do it. And be quiet and be still. Ask Him what you need. Come boldly to the throne of grace. If you, if you need something, tell Him. And then wait for Him. Anybody willing to do that? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'd mount up with wings as eagles. They'd run and not be weary. They'd walk and not faint. Are you willing to lift your hands this morning and just surrender all? You remember the surrender? That's what that means. You're lifting up your hands. Let's pray. God, we brought what you told us to. God, your word is yea and amen. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. We was glad we was here for this morning and for this uh, morning worship service. God, we receive your word. We receive you. We trust you. God, we believe and we're going to quit struggling with some things. We're going to start having faith for some things. And we're going to begin to use your name because there's power in our covenant name. God, I praise you. I, I don't know what everybody's going through, but you do. Lord, you know what they're dealing with. I know what I'm dealing with. And I know that you're able. You're our refuge and you're our strength. God, we give you praise. Give us a revelation like David had. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord.